This is now. We begin with this at noon. Police have arrested more than 2,000 people during pro-Palestinian protests at college campuses across the United States in recent weeks. That's according to the Associated Press. Officers broke up a encampment overnight on campus at UCLA, and police in Portland cleared out protesters from the State University Library. Today, President Biden giving his first public remarks about the topic, saying the demonstrations have not prompted him to rethink his Middle East policies. Bradley Blackburn reports from New York, where police remain outside several universities. <laughs> Students at Portland State University were told to shelter in place Thursday as police cleared out the library, which had been occupied by protesters. Police say they found tools, improvised weapons, and paint balloons. And this is what remains after police cleared out the pro-Palestinian encampment on the campus of UCLA. Overnight, officers in riot gear moved in, ripping apart the barricades that had been set up. More than 100 protesters were arrested. We need to keep protesting, and that's the only way change will be made, right, by resisting the status quo. So. As the day wore on, officers continued to make arrests in areas outside the encampment. We are still seeing the uh, resistance on the far end uh, to my right. As protests on college campuses nationwide escalate, President Biden spoke out, condemning the violence. Breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. At George Washington University in D.C., there were dueling protests you are not alone. between protesters who were against the war in Gaza. Humanity wins when we bring them home. And pro-Israel demonstrators who want the focus to be on the release of the hostages. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Israel's war cabinet is meeting to discuss the next steps in negotiations for a hostage and ceasefire deal. This as a Hamas delegation is considering a visit to Egypt for further talks. Natalie Brand has the latest. Families of Israeli hostages held captive by Hamas blocked traffic on a main road in Tel Aviv at the height of rush hour, calling for the immediate release of their loved ones. We need to stop the war. Ifat Calderon says Hamas kidnapped her cousin Ophir on October 7th. Enough. It's seven months already. There is no time for the hostages. They will be all dead. In his seventh trip to the Middle East since the war began, Secretary of State Antony Blinken ramped up pressure to finalize a deal between Hamas and Israel for a ceasefire in exchange for hostages. This is something that the whole world is watching. But there's a key sticking point. Hamas is demanding a complete end to Israel's offensive. Are you hopeful that they reach a deal? It's very hard to predict. Former Palestinian negotiator Gaeth Al-Omari describes the difficulties of the negotiation. The Hamas leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, wants a permanent ceasefire. For him, the hostages are literally human sheets. He believes that if he gives up that and Israel doesn't commit to a permanent ceasefire, he will become uh, exposed to an Israeli attacks, etc. The U.S. is also pushing for more humanitarian aid to be included in a ceasefire deal to help avert a famine in Gaza. CBS News has learned the Biden administration is considering taking in certain Palestinians to the U.S. from Gaza as refugees. The focus is on immediate family members of American citizens or permanent residents. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington.